it is snowing so much outside. So we are going to go and jump in the snow. I feel like it's gonna be here, but I'm gonna dive in it oui. and make a snowman. Yeah, we. 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 We are. Yeah. I'm. I'm partaking in this. Yes, of course. <laughs> It's going to be so fun. I wasn't informed. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Right before we were supposed to leave, a snowstorm hit Syracuse and brought plenty of snow for me to play in. So it's been snowing really, really hard for the past two days, which means that the snow is more than two feet tall, which is amazing because I've never seen this much snow, which is amazing because I get to play in it, which is amazing because it's not even that cold, but I get to dive in it. This is fun for me too. I don't think I've seen another grown adult see snow for the first time. This is quite entertaining. <laughs> Small things in life, I guess. I can feel my face when I'm with you, but I love it. Say it again, but I love it. I'm not singing again. Wait. I can feel my face when I'm with you, but I love it. <laughs> but I love it. It's really cool now. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Stop jumping around. What you got on your face? Are you good? No, I really can't feel my face. You good? You ready to go back inside? I'm determined to build my snowman, even if it's miniature. Ta da! Right? Sure. It looks like a fat bunny that's melting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when the storm stopped, the airports opened again, and it was time to leave the snow behind and find a flight back to Uma. Time to go back home. We said our goodbyes to my brother and hopped on a plane back to the Dominican Republic. Son las tres, yo le doy una hora extra. Cuatro de mañana. Ah, de mañana hasta las cuatro p.m. So we made it to Dominican Republic. We are back. In the hot weather now. We're back home. We're so back to speak. <laughs> temporary home. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we just rented a car, very cute little Kia, and we're going to run errands. IKEA. IKEA. <laughs> we're going to IKEA and a Kia. And then we're going to go get some uh, boat repair stuff, like Hopefully. fiberglass and epoxy. Hopefully, we'll find some Fingers things. Fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, and we'll have the car for the day, and then tomorrow we'll head back to Samana. I had no idea it was quite this big. It has an upstairs, a downstairs. This is like 10 times bigger than any Home Depot we've seen in the United States. I never felt this lonely, but I'm trying not to show. So it looks like we are out of luck. It's 
seems this whole country is full of chop strand mat and no woven roving or like biaxial, like any kind of structural fiberglass. So we are gonna have to wait until we get to Puerto Rico, I guess, to buy some. I'm sure San Juan has some. I know Luperon would have it, but we're not up there right now. So we're just gonna have to wait. We're gonna have a squeaky boat for a couple more weeks. Oh well. They had really good prices on their electrical wires, so we grabbed what we needed to hook up our windlass. So we finished all of our errands today. We got some good stuff and our friend Cynthia is amazing for opening up her home to us for the night. So we're crashing here tonight and then tomorrow we're taking the bus to Santiago getting the rest of our stuff at our friend's house in Santiago to take the bus back to Samana where Uma is. Music, lullaby in the background. So good night guys and we'll see you in the morning. The next morning, after good night's rest, we got up bright and early and continued our long journey to Samana and back to Uma. For $2, one of the boats at the dock gave us a ride back to our beautiful little home. Gracias. Welcome home. Everything seems to be in the same spot that we left it. The dinghy is still there. The new gas is still there. So the panels are still there, so that's good. And the boat is still locked. So. And we have new neighbors. A whole bunch of them. Look at that. Okay. Feel good to be back? I feel it feels so great to be back, to be rocking again. We have a bunch of projects to do and then we can go to Puerto Rico. Wow! Well, I'm getting ready to do a test install of our new refrigerator that was sent to us from a company in Italy. And this is it, guys. This is the cooling plate. This is the control unit, and this is the little water pump that pumps seawater through this cooling plate. Um, technically, it's supposed to drop the temperature of seawater by 25 degrees Celsius. And right now, here in the Dominican Republic, the seawater is 25 degrees Celsius. So this should bring our cooler down to zero, which would be really nice. Um, before we rebuild our entire icebox and make it better, I'm going to do a test install by installing this in our old just normal cooler that we got from Walmart or something like that um, just to like make sure everything works and then when we get to Puerto Rico I'll be able to get the supplies I need so that we can actually build our old ice box into something that's a little bit better insulated and reinstall this thing but for now I'm gonna try it out see what happens I'm excited this is this is neat it's very small it's very light brought this back in our check bag from uh, Syracuse This little cooler has served us well for many, many years, but now it was time to give it a new life as a mini refrigerator. It was pretty easy to install and hook up all the wiring and plumbing. Now all we had to do is sit back and wait. All right, guys, so this is our windlass. It, uh, we salvaged this off of a boat that they were scrapping back at the boat yard where we did all the work back in Fort Pierce. Uh, the problem was is that the Gypsy was designed for quarter inch chain and we bought 5 16 inch chain because it's much stronger. 
and that's what we needed for our boat. And the motor that came with it was completely corroded and non-working and seized up and just a mess because salt water had gotten down in there and just destroyed it. The inside of it is like completely shot. That's as far apart as I can get it. The rest is like seized and corroded and not happening. So while we were in the United States this last time, we picked up a new windless gypsy that'll fit our 5 16 inch chain. picked up a similar size and powered electric motor. The cool part about this one though is that it runs at 48 volts so we'll be able to run it right off of our motor battery bank and we won't have to worry about installing a 12 volt battery bank or some other way of running the windless motor. That was one of the big downsides to having a 48 volt bank and we run all our 12 volt loads off of a 12 volt DC to DC converter. So it's pretty much impossible to make a 12 volt windlass work off of a 48 volt bank without replacing the motor. So today I get to put all this together, test it, see if it works, figure out how to get this motor that's not designed for a windlass to mount into our windlass. And it's gonna be really nice to not have to worry about hauling the anchor up by hand. And now let's take a moment to reflect on the cause of all of our back pain. And now, our backs can deeply appreciate that we will rarely, if ever, have to go through that again. Pretty excited about that. Let's get started. Okay, since this isn't a marine grade motor, which apparently the one on our old windlass wasn't either because it lasted about four years since the manufacturer released it and it was corroded to little tiny dusty pieces. Um, I'm going, I took it apart, it's pretty easy, same as any other electric motor, but I'm going through and sort of doing my best to marinize it, as in adding Tef gel to all the bearings so that the steel bearings don't corrode on the aluminum. Um, I'll add Tef gel to these screws so that they don't corrode inside uh, when they hold the motor together. And I might add a gasket around here to keep any amount of salt water out. And when the whole thing's done, I'm probably gonna end up painting it. Uh, it will probably help keep the corrosion down a bit. It certainly isn't gonna damage anything. The inside looks pretty good. It's already sealed up and then it just has permanent magnets in there. So they're not gonna corrode either. On this windlass, the chain falls down through a hole uh, through the deck and it's kind of exposed. And the boat that we took it off of, the deck had all been rotted out because it wasn't very well installed. Um, they cut a hole through here and then the chain as it was coming up kind of like tore up the sides and, and edges of the hole they cut. So it, all the water went into the balsa core and got it all rotten. So to protect the edge of the hole that we're gonna cut through our deck, I made this little PVC guide that's going to go down in here and the chain's going to fall down through it and make sure that it doesn't bang up the, the edges of the hole and hopefully guide it through and keep water from splashing on the side of the motor too. I also added a fiberglass lip around where the motor goes through the deck. 
to help keep any water away from the motor. Once the windlass was installed, all we had left to do was run new wiring and hook everything up. So some of you guys might notice I'm not using tin marine grade copper wire um, for a couple of reasons. One, it's kind of expensive. Two, it's really hard to find here in the Dominican Republic. So we found this stuff at like a local hardware store and it's just normal stranded copper wire. But a lot of the wiring on our boat is from the factory and it was copper wire and it all looks like it's holding up just fine. Um, where it corrodes is here on the ends where it's exposed to like salty, humid air. So to combat that, I dip the end in dielectric grease, anti-corrosion grease, and then I crimp these on the ends so that they're sealed and then seal it with heat shrink tubing. And that way there's no exposed copper. And if there is any that gets in there, it's covered in dielectric grease, so it won't corrode. So that should make it last for as long as tin copper wire. And it's a lot cheaper. So that's what I'm doing. Maybe if it doesn't last, we'll replace it with tin wire later. But for now, this is what's working. The other thing that's nice about converting our windlass motor to a 48 volt motor is we can run much smaller gauge wire up there because we're only really running about 20 amps through this. Which, uh, which means it could be a lot smaller, which means it's a lot cheaper, a lot easier to work with, which is nice. We don't have to run big, thick, finger-sized cable all the way to the front of our boat. After a long journey and a lot of boat work, it was time to relax and enjoy the sunset with a good cold drink. Yep. That's right, the temporary fridge test works beautifully. We're excited to share with you our next step when we tackle a few last minute projects and set sail to Puerto Rico. Until then, cheers!